that big boss less special It ain't no game, but they saying welcome to the second level Hey guys, uh, welcome to uh, the third chapter of our State of the Union of Console 2016. Uh, Are we in a fucking fire chat? Like, I'm gonna put a, put a nice fire behind us here. Today, uh, we're talking mm -hmm. about everyone's favorite, the one that most people have <laughs> a, a strong idea of what they're doing as a company, uh, especially the shareholders, uh, Nintendo. Nintendo, uh, what the fuck are you doing? Like, seriously. I think we could just end this video right there and just say, I'm, what the fuck are you doing, Nintendo? As you guys know, I'm a huge Nintendo fan. and I, I've either bought or played every console they've ever had since the NES. Like, Game Boys. Other than I've done, I've won it from Portable for a few years there when the, uh, I had the GBA, was the SP was my last one I owned. Yeah. Um, so I didn't do the DS or the 3DS. But, like, you have these great IPs. You're not using them. You're at least a shitty console you've named it similar to the console sold great and people didn't even know it was a fucking new console and now what three four years later you said you're going to talk about the nx long, has, it? Hmm? has it even been three or four years I feel like no it's, it's been, been three because there's a year before the xbox and yep. playstation what is it? Yeah. I, I feel like nintendo i think they screwed up this generation big time and i think they hurt a lot of their fanboys so here's the thing i think they screwed up the past they've screwed up the past Three generations. This, oh, see, I love, I this like was a game. downhill slope since the GameCube came out. GameCube was an ugly ass console. It had five games on it that were actually worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Say what you want, Nintendo 64, but that game had some dope ass games that people still remember fondly. It had Super Mario 64, it had Banjo, Gold. it had Fucking Wave Eye, Race. it had Perfect Dark, Wave Race. I mean, it had a weird ass controller. Mario Party. But that control that controller, despite all its quirks, was it still brought, a solid it, it controller. Brought, well, it was the first one that had the uh, yeah. stick. Interesting. Analog stick. But so Nintendo sixty four, for all of its weird things, was still a solid console. Mm -hmm. GameCube. The, I think the only issue it had there was doing the cartridge versus disc. Yeah. I think there was a big issue with that. But GameCube, it had Super Super Smash Brothers and like it had the Zelda. Super Mario so, Sunshine. A few Zelda games. Yeah, it had its in, its IPs. Basically, if you notice, every Nintendo console has Zelda, Mario. Which is their problem. So Nintendo lost third party support r practically after uh, the Nintendo 64. GameCube maybe had, mm -hmm. again, some niche RPGs, but nothing that was an actual console seller. Mm -hmm. The Wii had... We had a lot of third party support, cause, but it was a lot of... It's very not they were typical game... It's very... The Wii was I thought like mobile for gamers, but it was great for Nintendo. Yes. yes. The Wii had yes. a lot of third party support and downgraded versions yes. of games that were coming out on other consoles. Yep. So they, you know, dug their grave even deeper there. The Wii U was just a poorly named console. Poorly fucking marketed. Poorly marketed. Yeah. It's a weaker and console. So I think if, so here's, here if Mario, if they had a game like Mario Maker at launch, I think the Wii U would have had a whole different experience because that shows off, hear me out, shows off the, the touchpad of what it could be. Sure. It shows off that full mechanic and the fact that uh, I can lay in bed and play Mario Maker and have my Wii U in the other room and watch TV is a real cool experience. And I get, I think that's what they wanted to do, but they didn't execute on it. So here would be my question to that is, what other game would then implement, would you just have like, I mean, a maker franchise, and that would be the only one that would actually implement that style, and two, I can do that with my PlayStation 4 and PS Vita mm -hmm. better. Well, what I'm, well, yeah, but you don't have the Nintendo IP. So I think if Nintendo took their IPs, the, the big ones, like I said, are Zelda, Mario, um, Smash is a big one now. You, if you took yeah. those and I had the ability to either play it up on the big screen or play it in my, like I said, 99% of the time, I don't have my Wii U plugged in my TV. It's just sitting plugged into the wall and I play it on my gamepad. Sure. So, to me, it's it's a cool experience and I love the experience, but I don't think it's, it was enough. And I feel like, like you're saying, it's similar to the Vita or even like the 3DS style. It's a little bit different because it is a console. But at the same time, only one person uses the gamepad. Yeah. Other people use the Wii Motes or Pro Controller, and it's just well, there's two it things felt that weird to this. The first one is when you have an entire one to two hour conference about your new console, and people come away from that conference going, "What? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Where's so it's mobile. A lot, of people, it's a, a lot of people thought it was an is accessory. That, is, that, system. is that a controller? Like, is that the whole thing? Yeah." When people are that fucking confused after you gave a whole conference mm -hmm. based on it, there's a problem. The second thing is that, you know, we discussed previously in, in some of the other uh, 
catch conversations that we had that the lifespan of something is is very important to customers and you know holding on to your console for five to ten years is something that we all kind of expect at this point <clears throat> when they dropped that they must have known that yes it was catching up to the consoles of the time but it was going to get fallen behind again with any sincere amount mm -hmm. of, of, of you know time added on to the you, launch of that machine. And, and now they're nixing it. They're yeah. making it up. If you look at Literally when it, nixing it. Uh, yeah. uh, if you look at what Nintendo with the NX, they've come out and said it's be industry leading chips or whatever the hell that means. Um, hopefully this is better than the chips that are in the, the Xbox and PlayStation just because it's coming out later. So it I don't think be. Nintendo understands hardware, but, so I don't think that they they're like industry leading standard two thousand five. So <laughs> Back when Nintendo was in their heyday, minus the 64 because they had the cartridge issue, if you look at the NES, NES, NES at the time, were high-end pieces of hardware. Like, they, that's what, and Nintendo, I think, like Tom said, the Wii was great for Nintendo, bad for gamers, because didn't have HD. I remember the big deal with the Wii U was the fact that it was HD was a big deal. I was like, cool, whatever. Um, but, like, you need more than that. You need something... Like you said with third-party developers, they have to change their games, bring it over, because it wasn't able to run it. And Nintendo, for a long time, has strained those relationships. And I think that they need to get back to what made them great at the beginning, which was put out good hardware. You have the IPs already. Freaking, as long as Miyamoto is there, you could fucking sell 10... They sold 10 million because of that guy. Like... That's why... And that's the problem, is they don't treat their IPs with respect at all. Either that, or they treat them with too much respect to the point where they don't allow it to open up to, yeah. to other avenues. I mean, it's when like they... everything that does well on a Nintendo console is a first party. Like, yeah. There's no yeah. third parties that do well. So, and, and even then, those are still lagging behind. You've seen these videos online of like... Um, what do you call it? Uh, the Mario for an Unreal, no, Mario mm -hmm. and Unreal Four. Mm -hmm. You look at that and you think, "Fuck! Why isn't Nintendo doing that? Mm -hmm. That would be incredible." I, th I think the biggest problem with Nintendo is that, and how you mentioned the the, the SNES is, so they used to focus on being a good video game company. They have traded quality product for all inclusiveness, mm -hmm. and I think that once you, as a tech company, start to change your mindset from, or at least a video game company, from, we want to cater to our, our, our culture of video gamers and instead go to we want to cater to the moms and dads and grandpas and and two-year-olds are playing it you can't have your cake and eat it because no grant like no parent is going to buy a six hundred dollar console mm -hmm. for their three-year-old you know kid so getting to the point of like getting all inclusive i think that's where the handheld console comes in or the handheld systems come in because my first console I don't know what you guys was a Game Boy. Like, oh, the first one I owned myself was a Game Boy. I had, me and my sister had an NES, but that was kind of, it was shared, and yes, you can say that was my first console experience, but the first one I remember saying, this is mine, this is my game, was that Game Boy. And I remember having it till I freaking, the back I had all taped up with the batteries and all that in there, and just, I think they need to take the portables and shoot to the younger audiences. I get that a lot of people's, older people do like the portable experience, but at the same time, you got to target your audience. You can't just say, I'm going to hit everybody I can. There's got to be some sort of marketing directive that you're going to send to. And I think Nintendo sometimes, I think the issue they have right now is they're known for these whimsical, cartoony looking games that, in my opinion, tend to help hold up pretty well over the test of time because they don't go for hyper-realistic, which is what they're known for. But you can combine that, like, look at Wind Maker. Mm-hmm. Where it's a hardcore game yeah, with so, that whimsical yeah. style. So you magic, make the gameplay match with it, and it's... It's easy, in my opinion, for for them to do it, where they're like, we're going to make a Mario game that six-year-olds can play, and the concept is real simple. So an example of Mario 64, you jump in the painting, the star shows up, you wander around this world, you find that. Yeah. But as you get older, as I play it now, I go and I'm a collector in that game, so I want to go collect all the stars, not just advance to the next stage, go beat Bowser. Okay, beat Bowser, I'm done. I want to get all, what is it, 150 or whatever it is, stars. I don't know, 120. 120 stars. So yeah. I think that's one thing they need to do is kind of like target their audience and say, hey, this is our audience. This is who we're building this game for. But also look at ways to expand it without saying we're just going to throw everything at the wall. Like Splatoon. It's a good example of something they did well. Yeah. Splatoon is very childlike and a lot of kids like playing it. But it's also got qualities to it that make it fun for the game. If a game's good, a game's good. 
Sure. Period. Even Nintendo has a lot of similarities with Disney in that sense. In mm-hmm. that, like, there's a lot of Disney movies that you can go into as an adult and watch and enjoy, and also as a kid to watch. And for and different enjoy. reasons. And they're very, very similar companies in a lot of ways. I'm surprised Disney hasn't tried to buy Nintendo yet. I think Mickey's one of my favorite Wii games, by the way. Yeah. So you know, I think I think you're right. I, th- I think um, there does need to be a balance as far as that's concerned. My worry is that they spread themselves too thin. You know, we talk about our own analytics for the show and we look at our analytics and when we know that we're maybe boosting a post or something we'll say like okay where do we want to send it and sometimes you can spread it too thin you Mm -hmm. can send it too vague and you can make it to too many people that it doesn't actually reach enough people that get feverish enough about it to to stick with it and to really like champion it and that's the problem nintendo has right now is that they are trying to appeal to too many fucking people and instead, they've completely lost sight of what made them a great company to begin with. And I agree with Jordan to an extent that the N64 was the last true great console that they released. I think that the GameCube has its own successes. Um, that controller but was weird overall, as fuck. overall, the GameCube was, was not a successful console. And then the, uh, the Wii was a successful console, but for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. The Wii U, I'm just, I mean, the fact that we're already talking about another Nintendo console and that they seem to have pulled support for it is just... It's it's depressing, and there's only so many of those types of mistakes that a company that size can make before the the, people the consumers them. are going to be like, well. And the I only don't reason you. the only reason people have stuck around is because the IPs are so because strong if they use them, and it's yeah. and it's crazy because I've said it before and I'll say it again: if Nintendo goes back in Metroid, Mario, Zelda, they probably can't do Banjo because they don't. They're actually doing a new Metroid game that looks like shit. So. Oh. <laughs> It's but a, like a t- the, it was like a 2D iOS game. But even on with the, the mobile yeah. stuff as well. Like, they said they were going to release stuff to mobiles. Everyone thought, cool, Super Mario World on my iPhone. Nope. It, it was, was like Me World, I think, yeah, is the first game. I don't know what it's game. called. I'm like, come on, man. Yeah, I just think you. at this point... Pokemon Go looks really cool, but I don't think that's technically Nintendo. I think that's Pokemon, which they partner, but I don't think they're actually the same I Pokemon. just think at this point, Nintendo doesn't actually know who their target audience is anymore. Yeah, mm-hmm. their identity is somewhat and skewed. And you have to remember, part of that could be because their target audience back in the day has grown up. So, like, are they still trying to target those people, or are they trying to get the new generation? Like, because the other thing we could be running into for us is maybe their target audience is the, is the younger kids and younger generation, but they market to the hardcore gamers. Doesn't work if you're gonna if you're gonna target little kids. You don't want to go. I mean, well, what for us when we were kids? I played Mario and Zelda and all that stuff, and I was fine. I know, but what I'm saying is like when you didn't watch E3 though growing up. No, I didn't. Have That's to. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying though. Like yeah. I feel like their marketing campaign right now is not. From I don't see Nintendo anywhere marketing on. I mean, I watch a hell of a lot of cartoons. I don't see them anywhere marketing on cartoon-based things. And I think a lot of its head starts too. I mean, we talk about the PlayStation Four being the the front runner still of the. Mm-hmm of this generation's system system war and that is largely because they got such a head start with it because xbox fucked up so bad mm-hmm. yeah. nintendo got a head start then, because the nes was the was the adoptive console of most people in america and and worldwide so when that came out there wasn't a lot in the way of competition nothing that could touch the way that the, the nes was working so then you end up with this this lead in these characters that are ingrained in, in an entire generation's souls and now they're just they're they're consistently playing catch up instead of leading the way. You know, what, you know what I think's really dumb. It's it's just, this is scary to say, but at the same time, I think it would work for them. Is basically do what you've been doing, back with the N sixty four, the NES. Take those, take a Super Metroid, give us an updated version of Super Metroid. Give us Mario sixty four. Just give us an updated ver- version. I love. The Super Mario Galaxy. Like, to me, that is one of the great games that's come out on the Wii. Like, I love that game to death. I think it's one of the best Mario games to ever come out, Galaxy 1 and 2, because it reminded me a lot of Mario 64 growing up. But you, so you don't have to... the amount of those type of games on I'm... one hand I... for the Wii. I understand, but those are system cells. If you take all their first-party IPs and say, hey, we're going to give you this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, I guarantee you there's enough people that will say, hey, we'll buy the console, and then from there they got to get the third-party support that we've been talking about yeah. to keep it going. Yeah. I think Nintendo's problem right now is no one wants to buy their system because there's no third-party support. Their first-party titles are few and far. They don't have anything releasing before April. I mean, I know April's right around the corner, but they, didn't have a, they had a two-month window where nothing got released. Three months. Three months. Three-month window where nothing got released. And I'm just like... Why? And the last release that happened was fucking Mario Tennis, which sucked balls! I'm s- I'm s- I can't tell. I love Nintendo, but they're tearing my heart apart when it comes to shit like this, because, like, 
It's like an abusive stepfather. Oh my god. I'm just like, just do what you did before. Just I will buy it again. sell your IPs to companies that know god. how to do things I just, and let them make good games with them. Just, how hard is it to redo Mario? Like, Mario Tennis is literally the exact same fucking game, just updated. Just do the same thing you did in the N64. Just give me a new version of it. And I would buy it. But again, they don't know who their audience is, so they don't know how to make it. And with that... Are you, are you Nintendo? <laughs> are you Nintendo's audience? Uh, let us know your thoughts on uh, Nintendo's practices in the comments below. Uh, share this with your friends. If you want to give Keegan a virtual hug. Woo! Nintendo. Or if you want to tell Keegan that he gets way too up in arms about Nintendo. Dude, Nintendo needs to Let get, us know in the comments they need with to get their up, shit together. or with an upvote. They need to get their shit together. It's kind of like angry video game nerd for his Yeah. Dude, I... Like I said, Take I love Buffalo shit in your face. <laughs> I love Nintendo. But that Buffalo is Mario. I love Nintendo. They're fucking up. I think they can fix it, but they gotta fix it. They gotta fix it quick. Otherwise, See, I, don't, I don't think. I don't think. Otherwise, their fanboys. I don't think Nintendo can, can fix it. Oh, their fanboys like me are very hard. So the twelve of you that exist. <laughs> oh, there's more. Than, there's. T I mean, there's ten million units out there. All right, all right, you, all right. So. All right. Save it for next but, time. Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. Thanks a lot for watching our uh, State of the Union on Nintendo. Fuck. Uh, sorry about Nintendo. Keegan. And uh, we'll see you in next catch conversation uh, <sighs> when we discuss something else, I'm sure. Hopefully not Nintendo. Uh, and as always... Welcome, welcome to, to the, the second, second level. level. Bye. Bye. Woo! I got a little... Couldn't tell. <laughs> I had a moment You guys there. have the Twitters? I'm always on the Twitters. Come say hi to me on the Twitters at Level2Gamers, or if you go to twitter.level2gamers.com, it'll take you right to our page. And come say hi. I like talking to people. I won't bite, I promise.